Yo, what's going on? It's so good to see you today. We are gonna have a ton of fun because I got a myriad of stuff here on my desk, basically a bunch of random percussion-y sounds from around my house that I'm determined to use in this track because recently I got super inspired over the past week and it reminded me a lot of recording my Celebrate Life EP, which was a ton of stuff recorded directly into a microphone, a crappier one at that, like an SM58 basically, which is a great mic. But I recently borrowed this from my friend Tom. Shout out, Tom. This is the Soyuz 1973. Holy crap, I didn't realize microphones could be so important and it sounds so good. So I was messing around with it, made some tracks, and I just want to make a track with you today. So let's get to it. Oh, and no, this isn't sponsored by anybody. Yes, I work at Electron, but uh, that's my day job. I'm just here jamming. So I started with nothing. We'll just go ahead and throw on a little kick here. And I got everything going into my typical Ableton Overbridge Digitac template, which I have a link to down below in case you're interested. But then I have a separate track here called Microphone, which of course is this microphone. And I just wanna record some stuff. So here, we'll go ahead and do this like this. We'll hit, um, oh yeah, here, we'll try this first. This is my, my knee brace that I use when I go running. And it has this goat Velcro. So I think that is going to sound cool. And this just ends up being so fun because you go like this. Oh man, I'm ruining my knee brace. Oh, that was a good one. Okay, so we have a couple here, right? And I really like, uh, I guess we can get rid of all this. And I'm going to drop these tracks in down here. So it's funny, I used to have this really slow workflow where I would essentially just duplicate this track, select all the track content and delete it, which took so long. But I recently got to record and watch Mark Parfit, who works in Pro Tools heavily. And he had this crazy method that made so much sense. And it was so simple. It's like you have one track that's always recording and then a bunch of take lanes underneath it. Sure, he was in Pro Tools, but I'm kind of adopting that here by just opening up a new audio track and dropping these tracks into that track. And then it automatically names the track here. So now if I go back and play this from the beginning, we have that there and we have our microphone track muted and I can go ahead and record some more stuff on there. So anyway, we have these few sounds here and I really like this uh, last sound here. I'm gonna drag these out of the way and we're just gonna work on this first little loop section here. So zooming in on here, I'm gonna set our start right there and then bring our ending point about here. We're gonna adjust this a little more later, but I want this to be a sub to our clap. So it's gonna go boom, whoosh, boom, whoosh, boom, whoosh. And I can just copy this and paste this over a couple times. And if I want it, I can kind of let a little bit of this tail out. And to bring in some of the nice looseness of the beginning, I can go ahead and do this because if we zoom into here, you can see that there's a little bit of movement here. And holding down Command, Option, and Shift, I can actually slide this over just to get it right on the money of the 1.3. There it is. Sweet, we'll grab this, paste, 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 or Command D to duplicate. Whoa, way off, my bad. I need to put these right here and then do this like that. Awesome, so now that I got this section here, boom, boom. Awesome, now let's do a little bit more of a percussion sound. Those are there running and rolling. One thing I love about this mic is not just how good it sounds, but it just sounds so crispy and clear. The only analogy I can think of is how when you look at something in real life, it looks decent. But if you put it on like a cinema camera or something really nice and get this cool like point of view, it looks so cinematic and cool and just beautiful. The same with, is with this. Like I hear this in real life, it's cool but it just sounds so good through the mic, then into my speakers being processed by whatever it might be. So here, watch, I'll record this in. Ah, I like that. So there, I recorded a bunch of stuff, right? But what I really wanna take is these two bars here. Same thing, open up a new audio track, I'll highlight this and just, whoa, 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 whoa. Drag this down, bam, microphone 14, duplicate that over. And because it's two bars, there's a bit of changing, right? There's a that 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 really subtle. And then if you throw a little reverb on here, 
way less decay. Cut out the lows. Open it up a little, right? And here I want to throw an EQ8 on this just to get some of that low Velcro sound out. Now let's layer up, um, let's do some up hat stuff. And I'm trying to think how I would want to do some up hat stuff. I think I can find, ah, here's a coaster. This will work. Let's see. Yeah, that'll work. And I'm going to do this for like four bars so then I can accompany it with an actual up hat off of the Digitax. So. Okay, I fell off, but I think there's a cool idea in here, which is I'm going to take three bars and duplicate that. And this will then kind of give this weird ever-changing loopiness to it all. Drop, dropping this down. Let's throw an eight on here. Okay, kind of messy, but we can fix this. So there's the like of me resetting the spoon. I don't like that, but I can fix that because we can... Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. I can just go in and like delete these little sections here, or I can put a gate. Let's see if we can get the gate to work because we're lazy. Oh, yo, that's cool. All right, that works. Let me open this up a little more. That's fine, and then let me throw another EQ8 on here. We'll go to our fours. That's fine, and then I want this to be a bit wider, so I'm gonna do the uh, Haas delay, which is just gonna throw this a bit more in the stereo field. And I can probably even shorten this up. Let's see what happens if I do less hold. And then this, is there an eight on this? There isn't. So we'll lower this. And then I'm gonna bring this way into the background, minus 20, and then slowly bring it up. And then same with this here, we'll lower this. Now on Digitact, we'll go to four and that already opens that up a whole lot. Cause watch without this, it's very just, bah, uh, bah, uh, bah, uh, right? But then instead we have, uh, yeah, that's dope. I dig that a lot. Now, let me just throw in uh, a chord in here just so we can have something to work with. If I go to our Nord. All right, I got some chords I like. We're gonna be playing a D minor nine into a B flat minor nine. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Let's see. Awesome. Let's play that, hear that back. You can hear I was a little off in the very beginning. That's okay. We're gonna turn warp off and I'm gonna slide this over just a hair just to get it right on the money, all right? Cause I want that to be right on. And then here on this part, we can repair this by dragging this over, which is just the ending of the other part. And I'm gonna just put a little bit of a fade there. And overall, this is a little quiet. We'll turn our gain up here just so I can see the waveform a bit better. I know it's probably the worst way to be doing this. Now we'll drop our volume here and play this back. That's fine. Okay, so we now need that clap to be a bit more prominent, right? So I'm gonna go back to our microphone channel. Clipping. All right, there's some good ones in there. Probably clipped a little bit, but it's okay. Um, drop it down. Let's see what we're working with. Reverb makes everything better. Just not that much. All right. 
check this out. I used to love doing this. I'm going to go ahead and record myself clapping again. And the reason I do this is because you can get a bunch and it's almost like this ensemble of clapping and it sounds really cool. Sweet. And watch this. We're going to go and take this many bars, whatever that is, an arbitrary number. And we're going to take these two, group these two tracks together, call these claps. Actually, my bad. Let me uh, add a new audio track and take this microphone track out of here. Put this into that microphone track and then take the effects, which is just this reverb, and put it on the claps as a whole. Now, check this out. We're going to open up another audio track inside claps. Take this, which is the looping version of this. So make a copy, drag this over and see where it ends. And I'm just going to take this arbitrary part, put that here. So now there's this weird like cycle of claps going on in here. I just recorded two takes, but you basically made three takes and it's going to be a little loud, but we'll drop it down. Yes. How cool is that? A little eight on here. Dope. Uh, let's go ahead and open up a bass track. Audio Pro 3. All right, here we go. Yes. There it is. Dun, dun. Oh. Oh, auto filter on there. Saturator. Actually, let's warm it up pre filter. That's fine, over this. Now you know what this is missing. It's missing the classic shaker. So, yes, that's what we need. All right, so I have to gain way too high because I was making a track when my wife was asleep and I was like whispering into this thing. All right, that should be good enough. Mm -mm -mm. Dope. We'll go ahead and drop this back here. Zoom way up in here. Grab a little bit of a slide and let's see if that works. Oh, it's a little funky there, but that's okay. Same thing. We're going to do this like six bar rolling forever pattern. Drop it down into the uh, new track. Now, I wanted to take some change make this song sound expensive. Yes, that's exactly it. All right, this is gonna be loud, sorry. <laughs> now, lastly, we have, we don't wanna go overboard, right? We've added so many things already. From here, let's give it a little listen, intentionally. One thing I hear, of course, on my strings, but I really wanna just add in uh, some more kind of like little piano vibey stuff. That's cool. And 
and I just need to go and grab from here, grab that, duplicate that, and then we'll go and find the strings. I'm just grabbing this. I'm not even going to take the attack part of it, um, the initial hit. That's okay. Drag this all the way open. Go here. I know I grabbed more than I needed. Look at this. The only two so uh, sounds we have on the digi. Everything else is just recorded. How amazing is that? Yo, this actually adds a lot. This is one of my favorite things about this. Check this out. So right now there's a ton going on. And if we were to go ahead and look at all this stuff, right, it's kind of a mess, but there's something really important and valuable that I learned a long time ago, which is about up hats and how to add energy using up hats and then add more energy or take away some of that energy. And it's really important. So watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and just duplicate this entire section just out of fear of messing things up. Select all this, Command Shift D, boom, boom, boom. All right, we have a bunch of things going on. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the shaker and we'll leave the claps in there, that's fine. We'll take this out. So that's that little like, pretty decent, little loose, little sloppy, but listen to what happens when I add this. The rhythm is there, the groove is there. It's all stayed relatively the same, but this just emphasized where the knock is, where you want your head to bob. Without it, watch, we'll slow it down. Little loose, little sloppy, but the groove is there. Speed it up. Right? Watch, we'll take the strings out and this up hat. Really slow down. And if we want it, don't be afraid to fix these things, right? So watch, if I go in here and I just hit Command J to conjoin, uh, to conjoin these, to conjoin twin these, um, I can hit inside this waveform, Command A and Command U to quantize them to the beat. This is the sound that is um, my coaster. Whoa, that is not my coaster at all. My bad, I meant to do this sound here. Right, it's a little loose, little sloppy. I can just command A, command U, put this right on the money so that it goes well with everything else. But what, what this does is it's gonna take my transients, the initial part of the sound, and fix that to the bar or the beat or the rhythm, the 16ths, right? But it's gonna let the tone and the texture and the sound actually kind of live on pretty well because every single one of these, if we listen to them, they're all different but they all come from the same sound, which was this, right? So sure it's quantized, but almost like you can look at it as like the envelope of each of the hits and triggers is a little different and the gate's a little different and the frequencies of each sound's a little different. All right, since I made this with my knee brace, we'll do some vocals of uh, me talking about running. Check, check. All right. Run it. Run it. Run it. Actually, I think uh, this this one here, this little running, running, boom. I like this. Run it. All right. So we got a lot of work to do here, my friends. Watch this. Run it. I'll throw an eight on here. Running. I love that you can hear the beat in my headphones. Running. Lower this. I'm just getting creative with this. Not corrective. Running. Running. 
running, running, running. And then my favorite thing to do on running. vocals like this in house tracks running, 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 is set this to like eight. Running, 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 running. Or even a fourth. Running, 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 running. Right, and then if we play this back across everything, because the space between the two. Whoa. The space between the two run ins. Yo, that actually sounded kind of tight. Uh, maybe it didn't. Here, listen to this. My voice is on wherever it wants to be on, but the delays are perfectly on. So you need to make sure. I'm going to take out some of these lows. Drop this. I'm going to go ahead and look at this, zoom in a bit, and make sure that we're right on because I'm a little late. Right, I'll take this, drag it over just a little. There it is, that's on. Awesome, and again, did the same mistake. I took whatever was on here and added a bunch of effects to my microphone track. I'll go ahead, drag this down that in there. I should probably start doing some groups. That would be tight. Oh, yes, please. So I'm going to take these two, group them. Put these two effects on the group. Bruh. Little saturator on there. Yeah. And then tuck it. Try another little softer piano idea. We'll take this one out. We'll go back into the Nord real quick. All right, let's see what we got. Let's see, I went from uh, into this chord. Like that's kind of cool. That's cool. Uh, what's a grain delay? Uh, no thanks. I have no idea how to work that thing. Yo, see what I'm saying? There is just movement and texture and life and a human in this track. This is what I love about recording live percussion. And I don't know why I slowly stopped doing this. I was just so focused on getting these loops in here and looping weirdness. I mean, I guess in that, there was still me playing something to get the loops where I needed them to be. But it's just so different when you just have a microphone and you're committing and moving and hitting record and going. And this is something that you could do even with like, you know, a cell phone, just record into your voice memos or whatever it might be and drag and drop them in later on. You know, what? I'm gonna try that for next time. That actually sounds really fun. But yo, I appreciate you, my friend. Hopefully you got something of this, maybe a little inspiration or anything like that. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you again next week. Until then, you already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace. No, that doesn't work anymore, huh?
I can't believe it started with this Velcro.